Washington Pod presents Earl Nightingale. Not long ago, my wife Diana and I were in Central Florida and visited SeaWorld. There we took in the wonderful show featuring the killer whales and their trainers. It was terrific. We enjoyed it thoroughly. We watched the young men and women whose work is to work with the killer whales. They ride them and pet and feed them. They hang on to a harness attached to the whales while the whales dive 35 feet to the bottom of their tank and then throw themselves high in the air, tossing their riders even higher as they do so. Now, do you want to spend your days working with killer whales? These people do, and there were others there who specialized in water skiing, some driving the boats, others doing the skiing. We also visited a man who works in the advertising department of a company that makes the speed boats that pull the water skiers. The wonderful thing about all of this is that we all want to do different things, and those of us who are in the same professions want to do our work in those professions differently from the way others do it. Now, what do you want to do? Okay, that's what you'll become. You see, in doing, in preparing for what we do and in doing it, we become certain kinds of people who will just naturally live a certain way and have certain things. Each of us is responsible for what he or she becomes by virtue of the choices we make from the great spectrum of options with which we're confronted and for which our education prepares us. Our rich genetic inheritance gives each of us a wide range of options, and our free society gives us free choice from that range of options. The better the environment in which we're raised, or the better our education as young people and the better the education of our parents, the greater the spectrum of options we'll be exposed to during our formative years. Each new idea to which we're exposed raises a curtain on a new window of possible interest and opportunity. A child raised in a small village deep in the hills of an isolated area of the country may seem to be at the minimum range of options exposure, but television and radio bring to him or her the whole world beyond that small valley, and there are few places in that world to which he or she cannot aspire, and in which that youngster will not be welcome if he or she can qualify for them. Now, when we come to fully understand that we become what we think about, we begin to see how our goals can lead us to whatever requirements are necessary. The youngster who dreams of becoming, oh, let's say a physician, knows that college and medical school are necessary. We become what we think about, all right, all the years of our lives, and we can easily tell the extent and quality of a person's thinking by simply observing the extent and quality of that person's life.